Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Take 10, live right here on our International College of Dentists USA section Facebook page. My name is Dr. Amrita Patel, and I am your fellow ambassador of social media. We've got a really exciting program tonight, and I want to remind everyone that this is being streamed again live on our International College of Dentists USA section Facebook page. If you happen to miss us live, it is archived here, so you can always click through and view this even after we are done. If you don't have Facebook, you can still follow the prompts and get to our interview. Afterwards, if you wanna go over to our website, usaicd.org, uh, all of our past live interviews are archived there under the events section on the top. We also love knowing who's watching us. So if you are watching us, say hello. And if you have any questions for our very special guest, Feel free to drop them in the comments box on Facebook, and we will try to get to as many of them as we can. My special guest for this evening is our ADA trustee from Washington State, Dr. Linda Edgar. Welcome. I am so ready. I'm going to tell everyone a little bit about you, and then we're going to roll right into this. Dr. Edgar was actually born in San Diego and raised in a Coast Guard family, lived all over the world, including the Philippines and Puerto Rico. Dr. Edgar was in private practice for 29 years with her husband, Brian, and associates, and was chair of the UW Dental School's very large $22 million campaign and got to work with Bill Gates Sr. She was the national secretary for the Academy of General Dentistry, the national president of the AGD, and the president of the Academy of General Dentistry Foundation. And its mission was education and screenings for oral cancer for many, many years. She was elected uh, as the ADA trustee for District 11, which encompasses Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Alaska, and Montana, and is on the budget and finance as bu and business innovation committees, as well as the FDI liaison to the membership council and ASDA and to specialty recognition commission and CODA. Dr. Edgar's husband, Brian, is also a dentist, and they will have been married for 48 years this June. That is awesome. Welcome. So again, I want to remind everyone that if you have any questions for Dr. Edgar, or if you have any comments, or you just want to say hello, please leave those comments in the comment section on Facebook, and we will try to shout you out and get to any questions you have. So we're going to roll right into it. Dr. Edgar, it is great to have you with us tonight. How is the dental community in Washington right now? Uh, Washington's doing pretty well. I would say most of the dentists are back to about maybe 95% of production. Uh, most are vaccinated. Some are having a little bit of trouble convincing all their staffs to get vaccinated. I think that's an issue across the board. Mm -hmm. We just won our lawsuit against Delta Dental and now we're able to help get the right people on their board. So we're very happy. <laughs> Good. So you have an amazing background and you supported your husband while he attended dental school first and then you started at age 37. What was that like? Uh, that was hard. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to go to dental school right after he got finished with his residency. We were married very young at age 21 and uh, did you know we were supporting ourselves? Uh, but during Brian's senior year, I had a tubal pregnancy, and then during his residency, I had nine months later, I had a second tubal pregnancy, and a young lady came into his hospital and offered to give up her baby. So we actually adopted a little boy, and I decided to um, not go to dental school then. And when my son was ten. Uh, Brian brought an application home and I was 37. So I applied only to the University of Washington. I, I had taken a lot of courses <laughs> and uh, I got in and it was difficult because I commuted from home, had an 11 year old and Brian went to Desert Storm in my third year of dental school. <laughs> so we had a lot of things thrown at us, but uh, we've been working together. Uh, he was a dentist for 16 years before I joined the practice. We had separate practices, but it, like a 10 chair office. So we never saw each other <laughs> and it worked out quite well. Actually. Great. Can you share what your role as a trustee for the ADA has been like? 
The trustee role is really exciting. It's a privilege. You get elected by your state and our district has five states. So we only get a chance to run every 12 years from Washington. So I was lucky to be able to get elected. And so I represent five states, like you mentioned earlier, and we bring kind of the point of view from those five states. Uh, last year during COVID, the trustee board met uh, sometimes two, three times a day constantly. It was really exciting to see how we could accelerate decisions and get things done in a week instead of six months. <laughs> So I, you know, it's a, it's a very honorable board and wonderful, wonderful people uh, on the board that represent you. Yeah, we've got some some great leaders. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, being national AGD president? Well, I was the second woman president, the first to have to run in an election. The first president got ran unopposed, and that was rough. Uh, you know, you run against your friends, so it makes it really tough um, mm -hmm. to have an election. And that's true even at the ADA level. Um, we, I was very interested in membership and the AGD has got about 40,000 members and we emphasize education, uh, getting your mastership and your fellowship. And I had gone through and gotten those two designations. and. And then after you get those, you can also work on your lifelong learning and service award. So we keep accolading dentists for serving and doing good things. And, you know, just like any, any board, the AGD board's a national board. It's much like the, the ADA board. Uh, you have differences of opinion. You have to kind of be the, the uh, negotiator when you're the president you're not supposed to give your opinions so but you do want everybody to have a chance to you know help and give mm -hmm. their their point of view so but it worked out great i had again a very wonderful board and um that was in 2013 14 and i was actually president when asda was starting to really get into their leadership conference. So back on their first conference, I was able to go and I've been able to go since because I was the uh, I was the liaison to ASDA last year. And, you know, it is so exciting to go into ASDA meetings and see half the dentist women <laughs> because awesome. I never had that. I never had that. Uh, when we were president, when I was president of AGD, we um, were meeting in DC uh, Jeff Cole, past ADA president, worked out to meet with the students and we got a chance to do a private tour at the Capitol. And I'm going, oh, it's gonna be me and all men again. And, and sure enough, 18 women showed up from ASDA. So I was very excited for the future yeah, of women in leadership. ASDA is really amazing. And you know, I've gotten to work so much with ASDA here in the Northeast and they are just so on it at all just across yeah. the board and focused and bright and determined and they're fielding dental school you know yeah. it's easy to forget that when they show up to you know lobby day and our events and board meetings and council meetings you know we get to take off of, of work and they're still studying and they still have school going on um yes. and it's just it is really awesome to see um the diversity change it's awesome to see the that there's so many females that are involved. Um, and it's great to see that that's starting to be reflected in our leadership. It's starting. It's starting. <laughs> it's starting. Um, but I think Jeff Cole used to say it in a way I really appreciated, um, the future is so bright. The future, yes, is, the future is bright. And just sitting and, and kind of looking around the ASDA table, every diversity, is represented there and every kind of practice mm -hmm. you know they talk about wanting to do this or that and their desires and our future is very bright we have an amazing bunch of leaders coming up like you and congratulations by the way you won thank one you. of the 10 out of 10 awards yeah thank you um but you know it's uh it's been a very interesting journey and, and so many of the lessons that i've learned have been been from them um you know and it's really it really helps to see where you kind of came from with all the leaders that came before us and then where we have to go and you know hopefully fill that pipeline to leadership with all these these leaders that are so so bright and so eager um 
Are there any words of wisdom you would like to share with new graduates coming out into the dental world? I got lots of words. <laughs> uh, I was a teacher for 15 years before I was a, a dentist. So I think the most important thing for new dentists and old dentists is to care about your patients. You know, call them at night, especially if you've given an injection or done third molars or a crown or something difficult, you know, an abscess tooth. And care about your staff. Your staff, no matter what kind of practice you're in, will make or break you. And find times when you can compliment them in front of the patient or in front of other staff. I had the same staff my entire career. And it's, you know, partly because I cared. And that was genuine. You know, you don't want to be faky about it. Your patients will commute from Florida to Washington to see you if, if you call them at night because not a lot of dentists take the time to do that. Get a mentor, uh, refer a case if it's tough and you get a stomach ache looking at it, don't do it. No matter how hungry you are and how many bills you have to pay, just refer it. You'll be happy you did. Um, be patient with your patients if they don't accept your treatment. Sometimes, if, especially if you're young, they're just waiting for you to get a little more experience before you work in their mouth. And also, you know, patients go through different economic times in their life, and maybe they can't afford the crown or whatever this year, but maybe they will next year. Be, be respectful of that. Um, also, if you make a mistake, don't hide it. Be sure to tell your patient if you break a, break a file or whatever. Nobody is perfect. Any dentist that says they're perfect are lying because we all, you know, have our days. And uh, if you just be honest, you know, with your patients and your staff, that is really good. So dentistry is a great profession. Uh, I enjoyed it very much, uh, but make time for yourself and your family. Be sure to carve out time. It's very important. Yeah, and I think that's definitely finding that balance and figuring out how to juggle everything is definitely a struggle. But um, time management is one of those things that is a, a constant challenge. And I think we all work at the best that we can. Um, there are a whole bunch of people that want to say hello. Risa Martin and Chris Liang and Julio says hello. And Alvaro Garcia says hello. Um, Julio would like you to know that we are, they are very proud of you at the ADA board. And Jeff Cole says the future is bright with leaders like you and I. Thank you so much. I wanna thank you for being here. I hope I get to see you in person in Las Vegas. Um, fingers crossed that, that that happens. I know that you know being able to connect this way is important since all of our personal connection got taken away um, and that your words of wisdom to everyone, especially to our students, residents and new dentists are so very appreciated. So thank you for taking the time and for being our special guest this evening. Thank you, Emma. appreciate it. So I wanna let everyone know about some programming that's coming up on April 7th uh, at eight o'clock, Drs. Jonathan Copeland, Arnold Jacobson and Herbert Silva will be our guests in a Live 45 to share more information about the exciting Veterans Dental Care Coalition program. This program has been awarded grants from our USA Section Foundation. My co-host for the evening will be our Vice President, Dr. Daniel Freed. On April 21st, also at 8 Eastern, Dr. Ray Gist, the recipient of our 2020 Outstanding Dental Leader Award, will be joining us for a special Take 20. He is also a past president of the American Dental Association. And as always, remember to look out for future dates and guests in our upcoming key mails, also posted on our USA section website at usa-icd.org. Remember to go to the events tab on the top and click on the events list drop down link. And of course, always follow us along on our Facebook because we do announce the upcoming interviews here. Remember, if you have any questions for Dr. Edgar or if you just want to say hello, even though we are not going to be live anymore, you can still continue to post them on Facebook. We do like to see uh, who is watching us and who is here. I want to wish everyone the very best night and please be well. We will see you next time.